Hey all, welcome to ShareTrek. This is Raj here. Today's video is going to be about an article that I read on AIDSMap.com. Uh, the article was published on 24th of November and it was written by four uh, authors from uh, University of Amsterdam. And uh, they had mentioned certain things. I think if you had read that article or if you are in the process of reading that article, you might form a pessimistic opinion about EBT 101. Uh, but I'm here to tell you that um, what they said is something that we already knew about before. Uh, and the clinical trial and the fast track designation, um, phase one clinical trial and fast track designation means that uh, those concerns are already uh, taken on board. And the FDA has decided to anyway give it a go ahead uh, because they feel that those um, the risk is within the acceptable parameters. So I'm going to talk about that today and explain to you everything. First, I'll talk about uh, what CRISPR is and what are the risks associated with CRISPR so that you can understand the what is being said in the paper. And I'll explain you why uh, it doesn't change anything for uh, you with regard to EBT 101. With that said, let's get started. Welcome back, friends. Um, the, uh, whatever I'm going to talk to you today uh, about uh, regarding the article was an article published by Ye Liu, Y-E-L-I-U, then Carolyn S. Binda, uh, Ben Berkout, and Adse T. Das, all from the University of Amsterdam. And in order to understand their article and the concerns that they have raised, you need to understand what happens with CRISPR. So um, CRISPR is basically... Um, a sequence that is found in bacteria. Uh, bacteria use the CRISPR sequence to so store patterns uh, from uh, pathogens that had inv invaded them earlier, and it uses a Cas9 molecule to uh, truncate a virus as soon as it enters uh, the bacterial body. Uh, it immediately uses the CRISPR pattern to match and uh, cut the virus at that point where the pattern is matched, thereby deactivating the virus. This is the defense mechanism for bacteria. And Jennifer Durna and uh, Emmanuel Charpentier got a Nobel Prize uh, for uh, uh, CRISPR. And uh, since then, people have been trying to use CRISPR to edit genes and uh, create genomic medicine or gene therapies. And there are multiple types of gene therapies. One is uh, ex vivo, where uh, you uh, do all the modification of the cells using um, CRISPR. Uh, in a petri dish or in a test tube outside the body and once you have modified the cells you put it back into the patient's body so if it was the cell taken from the same patients modified and put it back it is called as an autologous uh, uh, therapy if the cells come from a healthy donor and it's being modified and put into a patient's body then it's called as allogenic in which case they have to make certain modifications in the cell so that it can avoid being attacked by the immune system of the patient to whom they are donating it so that was X Y O. It comes in two flavors, allogenic and autologous. Now uh, let's look at the other method wherein the gene editing is done within the body. It is called as in vivo. EBT101 is an in vivo gene editing because uh, the EBT101 uh, editing um, comp uh, molecule as well as the guide RNAs uh, go into the body and go to individual cells and cut off the uh, gag protein. Uh, from a HIV provirus, which is embedded in our, in our DNA. Now, uh, when it comes to the CRISPR technology, um, it has been known uh, that there are certain parts in our uh, DNA um, where if you make a double-strand cut, uh, it could cause uh, cancer. It's carcinogenic. So it's already been mapped, and we know which parts those are, and we uh, generally uh, editing uh, near that place uh, is not done. So that's point number one that you have to bear in mind. Point number two, we now have technologies where without double strand break, we can still do the editing. So we have base editing and we have prime editing where uh, that is done. And that is also a superior form of uh, uh, CRISPR-Cas9, which is called Chardonnay from Caribou, uh, where a scaffolding is used or a guide RNA uh, is accompanied with a, uh, a scaffolding RNA, for the lack of better term, I don't remember the term, but it's, it provides the template, it's a template RNA, so it goes along with it. So using the template, a proper uh, copy is made of the complementary RNA, which is not edited, but which has been cut. So there are methods available to reduce the errors 
uh, that could possibly happen. EBT 101 had already told us that they had checked various locations in the body to make sure that the guide RNAs they are setting is only targeting a unique sequence found only in the HIV uh, virus. So it's not cutting anywhere else. Now, according to uh, the uh, authors of this new article um, in AIDS map, uh, the title reads that gene editing may not be the safest HIV uh, cure strategy, early findings warn. That's the title. So what the authors are saying is that uh, the HIV virus embeds itself in random spots on the human uh, DNA. So whenever uh, EBT goes and cuts it, uh, it depends on where the virus has embedded itself. And uh, therefore, if it is embedded adjacent to uh, a carcinogenic uh, region, uh, then uh, the, uh, the onco uh, genes can be triggered and they can cause cancer. Now, from my point of view, what I am thinking is that uh, HIV itself could have caused cancer because if it's going and embedding itself randomly in, in different places, if it's already embedded itself near a carcinogen, carcinogenic area, it means that it had done a cut before and then it had gone and embedded itself inside it. So that's point number one. Second point is that the um, uh, EBT-101 uh, uh, guide RNAs, they target a location within the HIV uh, uh, genome, uh, which is embedded in the human genome. So it's just cutting inside the HIV uh, DNA. Uh, so um, I think um, I, I, I don't understand how it's going to go and cut somewhere on the human DNA because it's uh, EBT has said that they have confirmed that the sequence that the guide RNAs are targeting is not present on the human genome. So that's the second point I wanted to say. And then, of course, uh, we look at what is happening with EBT-101 uh, with regard to um, our uh, FDA. Now, FDA takes gene therapy very seriously because it's a new technology and they want to be absolutely careful uh, to make sure that nothing goes wrong. It's their ultimate responsibility. And even though the article says that AGT-103 is taking cells out, making the changes, and then putting it in so it is safe, um, AGT-103 has not got the fast-track designation yet, whereas EBT-101 has already got the fast-track designation with uh, FDA. That means that FDA is working closely with EBT-101 on an ongoing basis and giving them guidance and giving them answers to various questions. And already the first dosing has been done and uh, data results are very encouraging. And prior to this, uh, it was done on uh, non-human primates and that also came out well. So friends, I would say that I'm not saying that this article by four scientists uh, is wrong. They know more than I do. So I, I acknowledge that. But based on what I have read as an investor, I don't think uh, uh, anyone needs to worry too much about this because the FDA approval process automatically takes care of all these concerns. If there was any amount of risk involved which was not acceptable, FDA would say that uh, the therapy cannot go further anymore. And they would ask for changes. And uh, they haven't done that with uh, EBT-101. In fact, they have promoted EBT-101, and I think EBT-101 is doing very well based on the early data release from the first set of patients. So I'm hopeful that it's going to do well. Uh, I agree with what the authors have said about um, uh, CRISPR editing, and it's well known uh, in the industry that um, when a CRISPR edit is done on human DNA, the double-strand cuts uh, are repaired by DNA automatically. So when DNA automatically repairs, uh, it is prone to uh, create some errors, and that errors can cause mutations. That is point number one. Uh, second thing is it's already mapped which are the areas of the DNA that should be avoided in order to avoid causing cancer. So these things are already known to us, and therefore I think EBT will be able to skirt these issues. And I suppose that they could also use uh, base editing or prime editing if required. Uh, I don't think it has come to that, but uh, if uh, FDA for some reason uh, tells them uh, that they, ca ca the CRISPR-Cas9 uh, combo that they are using and doing the double-strand cuts is not acceptable, then I'm pretty sure that uh, uh, Exition can execute the same strategy using some other gene editing uh, method. 
And um, yeah, so that's all I have to uh, say. And this also reflects on the other uh, two uh, in vivo edits that I discussed about with EBT 101. Uh, one of them was uh, suppressing CCR5 and the other was uh, suppressing the MOX gene. So there also we are having CRISPR-Cas9 uh, editing in vivo, if I'm not mistaken. So those two will have to be checked again. I think it's a separate study. I don't think it's under FDA uh, clinical trial at this point of time. So one can cross the bridge when it comes to it. But right now, as far as EBT 101 is concerned, I, I'm still very optimistic that it's going to go through. Uh, this changes nothing, in my opinion, for me. Um, uh, of course, uh, I don't know more than those authors, but this is my two cents as an investor who is interested in gene therapies and who has been following the CRISPR technology and its evolution from an investment perspective. So that's all from my side, my friends. And uh, if you want to have a look at the article, I put the link uh, in the description. If you want to see the original article, it's behind a paywall in a, a research publication. So you will probably have to uh, subscribe to it and then have a look at the original article. But uh, my comments are coming from what I read in the article that was made on basis of this into AIDS map, which again is a popular resource for looking up what's happening in the HIV uh, uh, sector. So with that said, I would like to bring this video to an end. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And thanks to all our members and subscribers who are helping us continue to bring HIV-related uh, programming to you. Uh, and it's much really appreciated. And to all our other viewers who view HIV programming in our channel regularly but have not yet become members or subscribers, I would request that first of all you become a subscriber. It's absolutely free. And that helps the channel. And that helps us keep the light on. And if possible, can you please become a member or a Patreon uh, and help this channel because we need your uh, material support in order to continue doing these kind of programs at the frequency at which we are doing this. And also to be able to afford some expert technical help in case we want to go deeper and in a more reliable way uh, about all these technologies. With that said, I'd like to end this video here. Bye for now.